In this short video, we'll go over some techniques and examples of how to find the limit using the limit laws or um, some algebra skills. Well, first, if you ask to find the limit of the function when x goes to c, c is a real number, you always want to try to use uh, the direct substitutions, which means um, if you can substitute the value of c into the x of a function f of x. Um, if the answer is yes, then you want to, um, you can just find the limits by uh, substitute uh, x by c, which is uh, just a function value f of c is the limit of a function f of x when x go to c. If the answer is no, then you have uh, a few multiple options where you can look at. In this video, there will be four different techniques which you can use in order to find the limit using limit laws. Um, it's cancellations, you, you can use squeeze theorem, special limits, or uh, rationalizations. Cancellations means you can simplify a function f of x by factoring and then simplifying. Rationalizations just means you multiply the functions by the conjugate. All right, but first let's discuss some properties of limits. The first properties is a limit of a constant regardless where what the value of c is, it should be just that constant. The second properties is if you multiply a constant d to a function, then you can move the constant d out in front of the limit. The third properties is if you find the limit um, of the sum of the two function x, f of x, and g of x, then you can split the limit into two different limits. The fourth one is if you find the limit of the product, then you can multiply limit of f of x times uh, the limit of g of x. And the last properties is if you find the limit of the quotient, you can find the limit of f of x and then divide it by the limit of g of x. Keep in mind that the limit of g of x when x equal to c has to be uh, not equal to zero. Now, if we have a, some informations of the limit of f of x when x equal to c equal to three and the limit of g of x when x equal to c equal to negative two. Then if we ask to find the limit of three times f of x when x equal to c, which is equal to three times three, right, equals to nine. And the limit of two x, two f of x plus g of x equals to two times three, plus or minus 2, which is 4. And the limit of f of x times g of x will be equals to 3 times negative 2 equals to negative 6. And the limit of negative 3 f of x divided by g of x is going to be negative 3 times 3 divided by negative 2, which is 9 over 2. So here are the five properties of the limit. And keep in mind that um, in order to use these properties, each of the limit, uh, limit of f of x and the limit of g of x when x go to c exists. Now this is an, uh, an example of how to use cancellations technique to find uh, a limit. When you look at this example uh, x go to 4, limit of x go to 4. And you cannot plug 4 into the functions because 4 minus 4 in the denominator will be 0. But the first thing you want to do is you want to factor uh, the numerator in this case. So to factor it out, you get x minus 4, x minus 5 in the numerator. You can see that you can cancel out the x minus 4 in the top and in the bottom, which will leave you x minus 5 as a result. Now you can think about can you plug 4 into x to find the limits? The answer is yes, and that means you can use direct substitution. So 4 minus 5 equals to negative 1. 
So the answer is negative 1. And this is the graph of the functions. You can see that at x equals to negative, x equal to 4, you have a removable discontinuity. It's because you removed the term x minus 4 earlier. And as x go to 4, uh, the limit is negative 1. Here's an example of how to use a rush, rationalization technique. Here you have another example where radicals is involved. And again, you cannot plug 0 into the function to find the limit, which means direct substitution can be used here. So you have a radical, maybe you think about, you know, multiply the functions by the conjugate. The conjugate of the numerator is square root of t squared plus 9 plus 3. And if you multiply anything to the top, you need to apply the same thing to the bottom to reserve the equivalency of the function. Then you do um, multiplications in the denominator in the numerator, um, you get t squared plus 9 minus 9. And then from here, 9 minus 9 equals to 0. You have t squared left in the numerator. You can cancel the t squared and at the bottom. At this point, you ask yourself, can you plug 0 into t in order to find the limit without running in and running running in into in and any problems? Well, the answer is yes, right? That means you can use direct substitutions. If you replace t squared, t is by 0, you get 1 over square root of 9, which is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. So the answer is 1 over 6. Here's a graph of the functions. And again, at, x, at t equal to 0, you have a uh, discontinuity. And it's removable because you removed it during the process of rationalizing the term. Next is uh, an example of how to use a squeeze theorem. Uh, the squeeze theorem say that if you have three functions, f of x, g of x, h of x, where g of x is the middle functions between f of x and h of x, where x is near uh, a value a, except possibly at a, right? Uh, x can be near a, or x can be at a. And the limit of f of x when x goes to a is the same as the limit of x of uh, h of x when x goes to a equals to l. x exists and l is a finite value. Then the limit of the middle function g of x when x goes to a is also l. Here's an example. We asked to find the limit um, to show that this limit is equal to 0. And at first, you can plug 0 into the function because you have x squared in the denominator. So you want to start with sine of pi over x squared. And you know that sine is uh, the range of sine functions from negative 1 to 1. So your sine function is squeezed between negative 1 and 1. But originally, you don't just have sine. You also have square root of x cubed plus x squared. So you multiply square root of x cubed plus x squared to every single term of this inequality right? to get the original equations, uh, original functions. And you can see that this is the left function is f of x, the middle function is g of x, and the right function is h of x. And here is the graph of h of x, g of x, and f of x. And you can see that g of x is the green graph and is squeezed in between h of x and f of x, especially at 0. And using direct substitution, we can find that uh, the limit of the f of x function equal to 0. Also, the limit of the function h of x is equal to 0. So using the squeeze theorems, we can conclude that the limit of the function g of x also equal to 0, which has which shown that the limit of this function equal to 0. Special limits. I will present two special limits in this video, in this lecture. So the first special limit is limits of sine x over x when x goes to 0 equals to 1. And the limit of cosine of a minus 1 over a 
when a goes to zero also is equals to zero. Okay. First example is we asked to find the limit of three sine of two x divided by x when x goes to zero. And again, you cannot plug zero into x to find the limit. But you see that this is uh, this form sine two x over x is similar to sine of x over x. Then we want to use the fact that uh, the limit of sine of 2x divided by 2x when x goes to 0 equals to 1. Then we want to multiply the denominator. We need 2x in the denominator. Uh, so then we multiply 2 to the denominator and also 2 to the numerator. And we can extract this function out. And we know that the limit of this function when x goes to 0 is 1. So then uh, the answer for this limit should be 6 times 1 equals to 6. Right. Now look at the, a different example uh, which we can use a second special limit. This example, again, we want to use a f the special limit and also the fact that you can Take cosine of 7a minus 1 divided by 7a equal to 0. So you need to have the 7a in the denominator. So you multiply the denominator by 7a, and you multiply the numerator by 7a. But I just move it out in front of the limit. And then you can extract this limit. As you know that this limit is equal to 0, so the answer is 7 times 0 equal to 0. So this short video shows you some examples of how you can find limits of a function at a certain point using uh, the limit laws, properties of limits, or some algebra skills, um, algebra manipulations uh, to get to the points where you can use direct substitution to find the limit of the functions.